Okay, so let's uh, let's put it all together now. We're going to go through a very important exercise in spectroscopy, and that is predicting what you expect to find before you find it. It's a totally different exercise than going backwards, right? So what we're going to do is, first of all, review what kind of things we have to consider, and then we have four things we're going to consider, right, for each spectrum, and then we are going to go from there, all right? So the first thing we do is we consider the number of signals. Okay, so we're going to look at a compound in a minute. We're going to just predict how many signals we should find there. And then we're going to look at the chemical shift, right? And this is going to tell us, uh, this is going to tell us the, um, the polarity of the environment. Then we're going to look at the area under the curve. That's going to tell us how many hydrogens are in each. And then we are going to look at the multiplicity. Multiplicity, right? which tells us how many neighbors there are. The number of signals tells us how many kinds. The shift tells us polar environment. Uh, in other words, what's, its next, what it's, what's it next to? The area tells us how many, the area of each signal tells us how many hydrogens are represented by that signal. And the multiplicity says how many neighbors. Okay, right? Those are the four questions. All right, so let's begin. Let's take a let's take this compound. Now, this is an introductory organic chemistry course, so you don't know how to name this, but I'm going to name it this. Oh, rather, just a second here. This. Where am I here? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, let's do it again. This is acetate, and this is isopropyl. Right? This is an ester, so this is called isopropyl acetate. So what I did was I looked up the spectrum of isopropyl acetate. I put it under the slide. We'll go and look at it in a second. Um, and then I, um, but but I predicted first, right? And when it was, so we'll pull the spectrum up after we predict, and we'll make sure that we get what's going on. Okay? So let's come over here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to answer the first question: How many signals am I going to have? Let's do this in red. So there are three hydrogens, right, that are, une that are unequivalent to anything else. Let's call this A. Let's call this one B. Let's, there's three here, right? Let's call this C. There's only one here. And whoa, wait a second. That's also B. Can you see that? It's the same as that B over there because there's free rotation about this bond. Okay, so we have A, B, and C. I'm going to strongly recommend that you use a table like this. Matter of fact, I'm going to, it's, 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 if I'm working doing side by sides with you, I'm going to compel you to do it. I'm going to make you. All right, because it's so useful to predict. All right, so we've got this A, B, and C. Now, how many hydrogens are A? Three. We just named that a second ago, right? You see, we've broken this down into a bunch of simple questions. How many hydrogens are C? One. How many hydrogens are B? Ah, six, right? Because there's three plus three. All right, now what's the shift that we expect for A? So we're looking for hydrogens that are on a carbon, which is right next to a carbonyl carbon, okay? So let's go to a table. I pulled a table up here. And let's see, we're looking for a carbonyl carbon. I don't see a carbonyl carbon here. Aha, uh -huh, I do see one here. But wait, that's the hydrogen that's actually on the carbonyl carbon, so that doesn't count. And there's a hydrogen on an oxygen of a carbonyl carbon, so that doesn't count. Oh, wait, okay, here's, here's some, look at there's a, see that? So here's a hydrogen that's on a carbon that's next to a carbonyl carbon. So that's what we're looking for. Atomic shift, or actual chemical shift, is 2.4. I messed that up. Here, let's do that again. It's about 2.4. Prediction for, for uh, was 2.2 based upon some rule we are talking about earlier. It's about 2.4. So in our prediction, we're going to come here, and we're going to say the chemical shift for A is 2.4. All right? What about C? So C is, uh, is on a carbon, which is next to an oxygen, which is next to a carbonyl carbon, right? See that? So let's see if we can find one of those in our table. I think we can. Uh, there it is, right there. Look at it. So right here. See that? Here's a hydrogen, which is on a carbon, which uh, is on an oxygen, which is next to a carbonyl carbon. And I am going to restart that later, try in an hour. OK? All right, so this one looks like that's going to be at 4.1. So let's go back over here, say the chemical shift, right? Because that's for C, 
that's a hydrogen that's right here, right? It's on a, ox it's on a carbon, which is, right? So that's going to be 4.1. And B is on a carbon. These are hydrogens which are on a carbon, which are next to a methylene carbon. So these are usually about 1. Okay, so I'm going to put 1 right here. And uh, you, you want me to prove it to you? you it would be nice for you to see it, wouldn't it? Okay, let's come here. And there they are right there, okay? There they are right there. Okay, and it's about one. All right, so my estimates, I'm totally good with estimates like that. You probably should get comfortable with that too. So I said one, it's 0.9, and that's a, that's a good estimate. So let's go back here to this table and say about one. I already did. Okay, now how many neighbors does A have? A has zero neighbors. There's no hydrogens on the neighboring. There's the neighboring carbon, right? Here's the carbon that A's on. Here's the neighboring carbon. There's no hydrogens on it. So it has zero neighbors. So it's going to be a singlet. What about C? C, here's the carbon that C is on, and there's one next to it. It's got three over here, and whoa, there's three equivalent ones over here. So that's got six neighbors. For C, it's got six neighbors, and so that's going to be a seven plat or a hept heptaplet or whatever. Probably going to be hard to see. When we see it, seven is oftentimes too many peaks in order to get nice, nice, um, uh, clean splitting. So it'll be a hairball, okay? And what about B? B is here, and it looks like there's only one neighbor. Uh, here's the here's the hydrogen on B. I go to that carbon, come over one more carbon, and boom, there's only one over there. So B has only one neighbor, and so that's going to be a doublet. All right, so let's do this now. Let's get another pen, and let's predict what we're going to see. Okay, so let's predict this, and then we're going to compare it to our actual spectrum, and we're going to love it. Okay, so here's 0, 1, two, three, four, right? A little bit messy there, let me get a better four. Four, okay? So let's do our first one, A, this is at 2.4, so 2.4 is gonna be about here, right? And it looks like it's a singlet at 2.4, and it's about three. The area under the curve is about three, that's what that is, right? Here in the curve. So let's do B now. B's at one, right? Chemical shift for B is one. And there's it's a, there are six hydrogens. So it's got much more area. And it's a doublet, right? You see that? There's my doublet. Right? So there's a doublet. And the area under that curve is six. Okay? Now you know I'm estimating these areas, right? So when we look at the actual one, if it's not exactly that height, of course, right? We're just we're, we're sort of funneling our eyes in a particular direction, and you're going to be able to see it when we do that. Now let's do C. So wait, this was a singlet at 2.4. This is my A. This was a B, right, because B was a, a doublet with a si area of 6, and it was about at 1, okay? Now let's do C. C is downfield at 4.1, and it's, a, it's, a, it's only 1, so it's a small curve. And it's a, it's a heptaplet or a heptaplet or whatever. Seven plet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? It's got to be small because it only represents one hydrogen. Right? So this will be C. There will be a one next to it. And this will be C. Okay? And so this is our prediction. This is our shift PPM. Okay? And this is our prediction for the spectrum for isopropyl acetate. So then I go look it up. Boom. And there it is. Now can you see it? I wanted to put this whole thing on here. All right. So this indeed was at about one. Okay. I predicted that to be a singlet at, uh, at 2.4. Um, this has a three next to it. This is a doublet with a six next to it. Believe it or not, the area under the curve, because this is spread out, the area of the curve has got, um, it's, this is actually 6 and this is 3, so that could be a little deceptive, right? And this, we predicted that to be small because it only represents one hydrogen, and sure enough it is. I predicted it to be right here, and it's, down, it's up a little further than I expected, but there it is. And sure enough, one hydrogen there. Okay, and then I go to confirm it. They called that B, right? Can you see that structure? That's why I want to put this whole thing here. B is the one at 2. They call this B. 
I'm going to go to a different color. They called that B. Can you see that? At two. The one up field they called A. We were exactly right. Totally exactly right. They called that A. Right? And that was up field. Okay? And then and they called that A. Then they called the other C. All right, so we obviously labeled our carbons differently, but we got exactly what we hoped for. Okay? If you do this, you predict a few times, it will completely change your outlook on uh, um, NMR spectroscopy. It will completely make you more comfortable, and you'll be ready to attack some difficult problems. All right, go predict something.